page 10 of the I.O. notes. Let's just write a little bit about watchdog timers. So their application is in autonomous systems. Uh, later in the course when we talk about um, mutexes and semaphores we're going to talk about a case with one of the Mars uh, rovers where it kept uh, resetting and it was the watchdog timer that was doing this. Um, so the way that these work is that the application periodically kicks the dog, which really means uh, reset, reset the timer. If the timer reaches terminal count, it resets the system. And the whole point of it is it's um, used to recover from system failure. It's a, it's a kind of fail-safe. We're going to talk at the end of the course about fault tolerance, and this is one technique. So we've talked about uh, the vector table and these exception handlers. Uh, let's just talk about the steps that come between the exception being raised and the handler running. So um, when an exception is raised, so that's an interrupt request, a fault, a trap. The interrupt controller it should probably really be named the exception controller, but uh, they used to just be called interrupt, so it's the interrupt controller. It does a couple things. So it looks up the handler address in the vector table and that's like a function pointer so it's going to put that address into the program counter and run the handler if it it needs to take a step before it does that though it needs to save the context of the currently executing code so this is important uh, step two it saves the execution context on the stack and that's of whatever is currently running. So the execution context is whatever you need to be able to restart um, the, the code or the application wherever it left off. So you need to know what instruction it was at, so that's the program counter. Uh, the, the value of the status register. So the Cortex uh, M3, it has three status registers. Um, it's the application status register that gets saved here. And then the general purpose registers. So those would be register 0 to register 14. Remember the PC is register 15. So if you save all that, uh, then you can resume it later by restoring uh, those values. And the place, oh yeah, so I, I said it already, it stores this information, it pushes it onto the stack. And so once that's ready, then it invokes the, invokes the handler. And this all happens fairly quickly, so it, this takes 12 
clock cycles on the Cortex M3. So that's pretty fast. And so for real-time applications or embedded applications in general, you do want that to be, you want it to be a predictable number, so it's always the same, but also it's good if it's fast too. Uh, interrupts can happen frequently and you don't want them to take uh, all of your execution time up. Okay, and then when the handler returns. So it's like, it looks like a regular subroutine. Uh, it executes basically a return from subroutine instruction. Uh, BXLR is the instruction. And um, that through some trickery in the architecture that lets the hardware know uh, that is returning from the handler and then it takes some steps. So then the interrupt controller. I need some kind of short form for interrupt controller. It's a bit to write every time. It goes through two steps. No longer needs to look up the handler, um, but just look at what we did above. It basically needs to unwind that. So three is done. Um, what, it, what we want to do is we want to restore the execution context. So restores the execution context from the stack. And part of that is restoring the program counter and doing that implicitly resumes the application code that had been suspended. So this this implicitly resumes the suspended code, so your application. Um, I say code because interrupts can actually interrupt each other depending on their priority number. So you might have the application, it's been suspended so that one ISR can run and then a higher priority interrupt comes in and so the currently running ISR gets suspended so you can have these layers or this nesting of interrupts. Anyway, so all this takes 10 cycles to return, which is pretty fast. All right, and so now we're going to look at uh, an example application.